This video is brought to you by VanTracker. VanTracker is a remote automatic kill switch and GPS tracker with geofence movement detection, start detection, or door open detection. Go to thevantracker.com to learn about our 60 day money back guarantee and two months of free cellular service. All right, you're going jack <clears throat> to jack it up. I got my little piece of wood here. Um, these are ATE brakes. There are no circlips on here. And it says ATE right here. You might be able to see that. Uh, anyway, um, this is what the backs of them look like. Pads are just about done. Rotors are done. Um, now we're going to take off these uh, caliper bolts. Here's the bottom one. Here's the top one. Um, they're torqued to about 115 foot pounds. Uh, and what size are they? I think they're 19. It's going to be three quarter inch for those of us in America. <laughs> uh, brake line already did the steel brake line a few months ago. I should have done all this at the same time. This is 14 millimeters. This guy over here is 11 millimeters. And um, these, is that right? Yeah, that's right. No, 14, yeah, 14 and 11. These guys, uh, 14 millimeters right here, they just split the caliper in half. You don't want to mess with them. There's two up top and two on the bottom. Um, those uh, caliper bolts that hold it on are torqued to 116 foot pounds. Uh, so I'm going to take all that off. All right. Shout out to PB. Uh, this stuff is great. I'm going to spray some of this on those caliper bolts before taking it off. All right, I got that caliper off there. I got some mighty vac. It comes with some of these. Uh, I think they're supposed to be plugged from this way, but I just screw it up in there and uh, screw it until it stops. And that holds the brake fluid in there pretty good. There's this little part that goes on the other side here and uh, just holds a little tension on that connection. And I always put a little thing on there so I don't forget it. But basically, it's just those two caliper bolts and uh, the brake line. All right, now to take this cap off, you see this thing? This is on the driver's side. This is the Speedo cable. We're going to take this guy, just kind of pop it, the edge, pop it, spin it around, keep popping it until it comes off. There's your... Uh, uh, your axle nut and your washer and there's a little speedo cable it doesn't it's not attached to uh, the cap at all it's just square and it fits through the hole so if it seems like it's getting caught you can just kind of push on it shove it in there or you can just pull the cap off and it should come off without any problem at least that's how it is on mine now I'm just gonna try to unpin this nut it's peen in a couple places and try to bend that back and then uh, take this thing off of here. All right, th this is what I mean when I say unpeen it. There's a couple of uh, spots around this nut where there's a little indention. You can do the peen by taking your screwdriver and smacking it so that it doesn't spin. To unpeen it, you can just get something in here and give it a few good whacks with your hammer and deform it back out again, spread it out so that you can then rotate it. This is a 27 millimeter nut. Alright, well, anyway, here's what this looks like without the threads on it. It's got these slots in the top and the side and the bottom. And that's where you can peen it. And I think it's important to try to unpeen it because when you rotate it, uh, if you just real hard, you just crank it off there, you're potentially going to screw up these threads. And the nut versus the hub, the nut it's probably going to win in the hub. You might destroy these threads. Um, so anyway, I think that's why the, these grooves are so deep, so you can stick something in there and jam it and unpeen it. Here's this uh, thrust washer. I'm going to save this. That nut you're going to throw away. You're going to, uh, I don't know, call your VW guy. And get some more of those, a couple more of those nuts. 
And now uh, we're gonna put this over there. Now I can pull this guy off, and there's the uh, inside bearing. The outside bearing's on the other side. Might as well just pull it off. What the hell? Put this somewhere clean. Put it in there. Put it this All right. It's not great. That's pretty brown. Ooh. Other side was not as brown, but the other side also doesn't have the hole. The hole in the uh, dust cover, or whatever you want to call that, for the thing on the other side that was all real pink. Hopefully that's not a sign of my bearings being shot, because they're relatively new bearings. Alright, I probably could have done this on the car, but I didn't. I'm going to knock this, uh, I'm going to take these, uh, whatever they're called, brake pads out by knocking these pins out. And you just uh, take a hammer, knock it out screwdriver, bam, comes out this side, spring comes out, pads come out, and then I'm going to compress one of the pistons with a vise here, probably one on either side, stuff's going to squirt out, going to compress it and then uh, hook it back up to the brake line and pump the brakes a couple times to pop the piston out of the other side, so yeah, I'll try and explain that a little more clearly. So here's my, here's my setup for knocking it out, I just put the Thing up there, pull a little thing, whatever. Knock it like that. Now, I'm gonna take this long skinny screwdriver that I've always hated and knock it out all the way. And uh, we'll see. So there it is. Apparently, friction is all that keep that is all that keeps that in here, which is a little weird. And then pull the pins out, pull the spring out, pull the pads out. In theory, at least. Alright, so I pull the pads out, and here's the pistons. There's a little piston boot. Now I'm gonna take my vise here, squish this piston back in, and it's probably gonna squirt out some. Uh... Oh, shit, there it goes. Actually, let's see if I can just squeeze it with my hand. I don't know if that's gonna work. Anyway, I'm going to squeeze it and then I'm going to keep the vise on it, hook it back up, and uh, pump the brakes a few times in order to uh, pop the other one out. Pop. Squeeze one side, pump the brakes, and then the other side will just keep coming out, pop out eventually. Alright, here's my setup. Got my vise. Uh, squeeze that in there. Now this side's going to come out. And they say it comes out with a lot of force, but. Uh, and they said put a block of wood in there, but if you put a block of wood in there, it might get trapped. And then you're real screwed, because uh, you can't squeeze it back out, but you also can't pull your block of wood out. So I'm just going to put a little cloth right here, so if it comes flying out, it won't uh, hurt the piston too much, hopefully. But on the other side, it didn't. It was just fine. But it is going to, uh, once it comes out, there's going to be some brake fluid that comes out of there uh, from behind the piston. So here we go. There it is. Didn't even have to turn on the car. Uh, just pump the brakes uh, not too far. They always say if uh, you don't have any pressure like we don't right now, if you uh, put the brake pedal all the way to the floor, it's bad for it. Enter the master cylinder somehow. I don't understand that, but whatever. And so there's our piston. And yeah, should be able to pull it out now. Yeah, there it goes. Anyway, that'll come out. And there's your brake fluid. And I, shoot, I gotta un undo this thing and plug it back up. We're gonna leak in all the fluid. I probably should have mentioned before that last one. Be sure to uh, pop this thing off. And put some more uh, fluid in your brake fluid. Don't let it get too low, even though you're probably gonna want to bleed the whole system after doing this anyway. I mean, it's been a while. I need new, uh, new brake fluid, but yeah, don't, don't let that get too low. Because you're going to be pumping a lot of it out. Probably should uh, watch that from the very beginning of this whole process. Alright, uh, now I'm going to take some of this grease. I'm probably done for the day. I'm out here in my apartment complex. And so I'm going to take some of this grease, put it on that bearing, and uh, wrap it up and uh, put some rubber bands around it because I'm probably not going to get back to this until tomorrow and it rained a little bit last night. 
but we got some work to do inside. Ding!